way I don't think we have been before because the first double centurion from the English women's cricket team did that in an Ashes match. And across the world, cricket is booming. It's massive in the subcontinent, India, Pakistan, Bangladesh. There's talk now of leagues in America, where particularly around Chicago, the Hindu population are playing cricket and building cricket grounds in the most extraordinary way. Maybe even Saudi Arabia is about to start some sort of 2020 league. But for the purists, for those that believe in cricket being a big game of chess... It's the five-day test match that is the ultimate, and what starts tomorrow is a little bit special. Well, I'm very pleased, delighted to be joined by legendary cricketer Sir Geoffrey Boycott. Uh, not a man who's ever been known for holding back on his thoughts and opinions. <laughs> Geoffrey, great to see you back here with us at GB News. You were with us when we first yes. launched the programme. Yeah. Ben Stokes. Yes. He's like an alpha male warrior. He's a bit of a modern day, both of them, in terms of how he is and his attitudes. And they're playing this form of basball. But he said something very interesting before the first game, which we lost, which I thought actually we should have won. Yes. He said, entertaining matters more than winning. What does an old Yorkshire and England cricketer think about that? No, they've got carried away. They've got carried away. Look, the object is to win. They've been playing... Wonderful cricket. Kept us on the edge of our seat. It's yep. been exhilarating. All been good. But you must never lose sight of the object is to win. And in winning, why can't you win and entertain us? And they got carried away. You heard Stuart Broad, the same, saying, it. oh, you know, it's silly. It's a silly. If you're not going to play to win, you might as well call them exhibition games. And I don't think the Ashes is an exhibition game. And they lost, they lost sight of the object. And they thought they could just keep scoring runs, keep bashing the ball more and more. I counted at one stage, second innings, they were scoring at six and over easily. Yeah. Easily. Yeah. They wanted to score at eight, nine, ten. And yet they were winning the match. But in the end, they lost it. Well, Joe Root, who's number one batsman in the world, yeah. got stumped. You know, charging No, he got run out. Well, he ran at okay. it. <laughs> no, I mean, you call it stumped, but he actually ran yeah. at it, which was silly because he... He's one of the best three batsmen in the world, and at the moment, he's probably the best player in the world. He's playing super. He's got, he's got nothing on his plate, no captaincy worries. He was a shadow of himself in West Indies, that last series as captain. Yeah. Now he's playing with the freedom, confidence, and he's blossoming. It's funny, isn't it? I mean, leadership in all forms of life. You know, yeah. Joe Root, brilliant cricketer, mm. but has capped in a poor record, yeah. one win in the last 17 tests. Stokes is now one, I think, 10 out of 12. And we love the entertainment, but I agree with you, we need to win. How good are there, is it, How good are this England team, and can they beat Australia? I think, all things equal, they're slightly better. I think if they do everything right, sensibly with a bit of common sense, still keep the similar cricket, yep. but play with a bit of pragmatism, common sense, they can beat them. But don't take it for granted, and that's what they have done. They thought, oh, they can bash bowling around, that's probably the best attack in the world. That Hazelwood's a good. quality bowler. The captain Cummins, quality fast bowler. The off-spinner's a good bowler. You know, Stark is a wicket-taker, yes, he's a bit expensive. But if you to go through all the attacks of the world, they're the best at the moment. So, sorry, you know... Take them seriously. <laughs> yeah, I think that's if what... I'm batting against that lot, I'm going, hey, take it seriously. And the game of cricket around the world, I mentioned it in my yes. introduction, it's booming around the world, isn't yeah. it? I think one thing you said about women's cricket yeah. is right. I think the, probably the best thing that's happened from the TV money that Sky have injected. 220 million this year for four yeah. years. That's a lot of brass. Yeah. When I remember it was about 1990, I think. BBC were paying £1 million mm. for the rights of a summons. Mm. Now, £220 million. As it's gone up, more and more of that money has been able to be go forward to help women's cricket. Yeah. Because a few years ago, we didn't have one professional women's cricketer. Now we've got plenty, and so they can practice. They don't have to go to work and try and practice at night. They've got time to think about what yeah. they're doing. They've got better and better, Yeah. and they're very good. It's blossoming all over the world. Um, look... Uh, I live now in Cheshire, and there's a club there with my uh, daughter's husband. Her elder brother was chairman a few years ago. He's got six men's teams, and he's got three girls' teams. Yeah, it's changing. You see, this is interesting. It's changing hugely. And yet we get this ludicrous report. 
from the ECB this morning saying that cricket's institutionally racist, it's sexist, it's classist. I'm amazed it didn't say that it's fascist and heightist. I'm surprised, Geoffrey, they didn't even... Oh, the drink culture. They condemn the drink culture. I mean, a bloke that's been to work all week that plays cricket on a Sunday afternoon and fancies a pint, what the hell is wrong with that? I'm surprised they didn't even criticise the teas for not being vegan. I mean, we've seen this in your county, Yorkshire... One man accusing Michael Vaughan, yeah. being, you know, former distinguished England captain, being taken off the airwaves for a period of time. What is it about cricket? Our authorities seem to be almost frightened of who they are. I haven't read it. <laughs> no, well, it's, three, it's 300 pages. Look, I played for 25 years. I can honestly say I didn't come across any racism. Maybe I'm lucky because I played against India. You know, West, West Indies, Indies Pakistan, yes. lots of black people, yeah. many of them my friends, like I'd like to say Sunni Gavaskar is one of my best friends. Yeah. We still email and talk to each other. Yeah. Clive Lloyd, wonderful people. I don't think of them as black no. people. I just think of them as great people. That's how you should do, shouldn't you? And Ju well, you should judge people on who they are as people. Yeah. Uh, and that's how I it don't, should be. No, so I, in my time, I've not come across it. No, well, I'm, I, I'm really concerned about what's going on. But I'm, we're joined, Geoffrey, we're joined by, well, of course, almost everybody these days is sir. But we, we're <laughs> joined by, I'm sandwiched in between a couple of knights of the realm. We're joined the by... The saddest sir. thing is he's not Prime Minister. That, well, <laughs> that think, is an endorsement I will tread. I think that ship may have sailed, but we never know. <laughs> no, so, you don't know. <laughs> you don't never know. No, the the current one know. might not last too long. No, you never know, and maybe boycott could be back every batting for England at some point. We never know. Sir Jacob Rees-Mogg, you're a big cricket fan, uh, and Geoffrey was, was not being drawn on that. What on earth was this ridiculous report? all about? Well, it's a very good question. I mean, I haven't read all 300 pages. No, sure. I've read the um, highlights of it. Uh, I think blaming cricket for the fact that it's not played in school, in state, state schools, schools is enough. completely unfair. Yes, so do I. That, that, um, it's because the state schools haven't been prioritising cricket, not because cricket hasn't been making great efforts to get into the state schools. Well, and yes, and, and, and chance to shine and all the initiatives it, that we have had over that, the last That's right. Years. And, yeah. and, I mean, I know these initiatives are going on in Somerset and they go on with people who yep. are at a variety of schools. Uh, and cricket has been trying really hard. And... and there is a grievance culture in this country that picks up on every possible grievance that is going. And I agree with you, it, it, over the next few days at Lord's, there will be some drinking. But it's an incredibly nice atmosphere in which people yes. are drinking in. It's not intimidating, it's not unfriendly. The background noise is a bit louder after tea than it is first. And the, the Barmy Army are great fun. And, but it's fun. And, I mean, the Barmy Army, Geoffrey, they go all around the world with England, don't they? Hey, there's some bright people there. They're not rubbish at all. Some very intelligent, bright yeah. people. When you yeah. get to know them, and they've, they've travelled support in England, you ask many of the players who play, like Michael Vaughan, you mentioned. Yeah. They, they gave them fantastic support. No, they're not idiots. They're, they're no, not they're rubbish not. They're not. No, no I've, no. I've been with them. I spent five days with them at Barbados in a test yeah. match. I, I've just about recovered health-wise from the experience, but they're, they're great people. So... You're going to be at Lord's tomorrow. Yeah. I'm going to be at Lord's tomorrow. I'm going to be at You're Lord's tomorrow. You're going to be tomorrow. at Lord's but tomorrow. Can they win? So the question is, England's record at Lord's, the home of cricket, yeah. but our record at Lord's against the Australians over the last hundred and something years, ain't too clever. Who's going to win, Geoffrey? Well, the reason for that is because the opposition, you know, come from Australia, it might be once a lifetime to get a chance to play a home test. Home cricket. So they're up for it. Yeah, yeah. And England have to be up for it. I... A lot depends on the pitch. I think Stuart Broad and Jimmy Anderson, our two best fast medium bowlers, have been moaning about the placid flat surface, pitches, yeah. flat one at Edgebaston, and maybe they've gone the other way to give them a green top. Well, so Yeah, but well. the opposition are pretty good as well. <laughs> green top. It's all right saying they are. Well, we'll all be there. It's hard to play basketball if the ball's moving around on a green top.